Good morning to all. Sorry, good evening to all of you. Before we start today's session, please feel free to do event check-in. This will give you access to additional resources and information about events that we are running on Reactor, which are around similar topics to today's session. I will share the event check-in link with the event ID in the Q&A section again. Also, we have launched our Reactor group. Uh, please feel free to join our LinkedIn group. I will share uh, the link on the chat section soon. Thank you all once again for joining us today. My name is Rashmita and I'm the event planner for Microsoft Reactor Bengaluru, India. This session will run over the next 120 minutes, including Q&A. This session is being recorded and will be uploaded to our Reactor YouTube channel within three to four days. I will share the link to our YouTube channel in the chat section soon. Quick word on a code of conduct. We display this at all Microsoft Reactor events that we run and, and it's just a reminder to be aware of others. Key thing to take out here is to be respectful of other people's views, understanding of differences, being kind and considerate in the way you engage. The chat will be open throughout and we do encourage you all to participate. I would now like to welcome Vivek, our speaker for today's session. Vivek is a tech enthusiast and an open source contributor with around 15 years of experience in the software industry. He works at Microsoft as senior cloud advocate. But for now, I'll hand over to Vivek to begin the session. Over to you, Vivek. Thank you, Rashmita. Just give me a minute. I'm going to share the screen. I'm sharing it. Hopefully, this will low. Yeah. Uh, I know. Um, I just want to, you know, um, uh, you know, just reiterate uh, what uh, you know Rashmika uh, just talked about. You know, the event check-in where you you will find the content for this for this session and joining the linkedin group and and also making sure that uh, you get access to all these content which is that anyways rashmita is going to post about it um people have joined in for the first time um you know we do this azure happy hour uh, every almost every friday and on some fridays uh, uh, you know it's because of holidays and other things we do take a break but every friday almost every friday uh, we meet and, and uh, we talk about uh, Azure integrations, Azure as a whole deep dive sessions, and, and uh, open source on Azure, and some use cases and other things uh, which has been built on Azure. Uh, we invite uh, people who are building on Azure and have a deep dive discussions with them. Uh, while um, you know this is most of you's first session, um, and I just want to introduce myself. Um, I'm Vivek and. Uh, I, I started my career in 2006 as a software developer uh, at IBM and uh, then the journey was more of um, you know for nine years as a developer there and then uh, working with HCL uh, as a solution architect from a DevOps perspective and I was in a startup called Blackbird uh, you, know, you know from uh, heading the DevOps uh, role uh, and I had my own company and you know part of DigitalOcean as a developer advocate and Cloud advocate at Microsoft today. Uh, in between, I did uh, you know product marketing manage, you know manager role as well at Microsoft. Uh, while you know before I joined into the cloud advocacy. So that's my introduction. And from today's session perspective, uh, it's not uh, something um, new because this is a DevOps for all CDs which we are running at Azure Happy Hour. Uh, this is almost like a fifth session, I believe, uh, from a you know from a DevOps for all you know, CDs, and uh, we have been uh, discussing about uh, various components of this uh, DevOps workflow for Kubernetes. And uh, if you see this, uh, uh, how this is structured, uh, there is source code management, there is build and pipeline, there is containers, there is Kubernetes, and then policies and monitoring and other things which are all clubbed together. So, you know, um, in in our first session, we did discuss about what DevOps is and um, you know why uh, we need to think about DevOps and you know the it, different you know the definition of a DevOps you know what is the percentage of culture and all those things it was a great discussion we had with the community and 
um, and then we uh, deep dived into Docker, um, which was specifically from a uh, you know from our understanding of containers and container images and walking through some you know some of the concepts of uh, Docker, and then uh, we had an Azure as a whole deep dive session from uh, from a DevOps uh, engineer perspective, and then uh, last to last to last to last week we had uh, Kubernetes uh, production uh, you know you know basically Kubernetes how to structure it and how to deploy apps on Kubernetes from a production grade as well because we went through. Um, we went through all those ingress controllers and storages, and we went through all those, you know, different uh, how YAML deployments and controllers and other things which was there. So, so we are covering all these different components uh, in this uh, in this series. And today, specifically, we are covering uh, build and release uh, pipeline. How to build uh, and and from our uh, from this overall uh, overall project, overall uh, DevOps DevOps workflow, uh, from a community's perspective, uh, I'm going to use GitHub GitHub Actions, uh, but also I'm going to work with Azure DevOps today, uh, just to make sure that you understand both the tools, and uh, and then uh, and then we will see different uh, different areas uh, where it it can be executed. So if if you are looking for um, the previous content. If you're looking you know, where I can get content, resources, recordings, and everything, it's available on my GitHub repo. This is the QR code, and uh, you can take it from here, or you can go to my QR, you know, website here, uh, and you can take that, uh, uh, you know, you can view those uh, series, uh, or else you can do the check-in. You, when you do the check-in, you get that GitHub repo directly. So uh, feel free to uh, check in uh, as you go in. So, Today's discussion is, uh, you know, pretty uh, straightforward. Uh, we want to discuss uh, DevOps' uh, very favorite workflow, right? That is CI and CD, right? And um, I just want to go back, you know, how it was a uh, few years back, and uh, you know, there was, uh, you know, this is how it used to it used to be, right? And and I I just want to call out. You have a functional spec. That means you have a plan. You have a new feature or a function, new new product which you're building, and then there is you have a source code management. I'm talking about era of uh, where uh, DevOps was not there. You know, it's more of um, it had more checks and other things. So this is how we used to do it in in uh, in in. in IBM uh, when I was uh, you know, almost uh, 10 years back. Uh, they, you know, you, you used to push code to source code, uh, source control, which is some source control which was available back then. Um, and then, um, you know, the code used to get built. And the building of the code used to take some time. You know, it was like four days or five days of coding, and everybody, all developers, was pushing the code to the uh, repo, and then the code is uh, people taking the code and building it. And building itself used to take two days or three days because obviously there is build failures and other things. And you go back and you ask the developer to fix it, or there is a you know different kind of issues which is uh, cropping up while you are building it. So you, what you do is you go back to the developer and you tell them, hey, you might build you know a fail and we'll have to come back. So it used to take some time and a build fail is not just, it's not testing at all. It's just the uh, integration failures, you know, uh, the code integration failures which used to happen. And then uh, there used to be a process of letting the test team, you know, you know that there is a build available. Uh, there's the artifacts which has been created, go back and take it and test team and other people used to take it and put it in different servers using testing and other things. Uh, and then the cycle goes on, and uh, and then pre-production. While these things are happening, the developer is not sitting quiet; he's pushing a lot of other code as well. So the bugs are getting piled up, and it is going as a process. And, it, and by the time it reaches uh, pre-production and production, there is so many uh, cycles which has gone through. And obviously, the delay in getting the code to customer was evident. You know, it was it was uh, clear. Clearly spot on, and uh, you could see the time and days, uh, number of days it used to take to get to the production. It's a simple piece of code which 
which we are talking about imagine uh, today's world right you know it's almost like every day we are pushing code uh, every minute you know 15 minutes or 20 minutes uh, a developer is pushing code and um, and that velocity uh, developer velocity it, the code has to go into production to get it to pro get it to customer with bug free uh, is is very difficult to achieve. Uh, to achieve that itself is DevOps was invented, and DevOps it's not just uh, the cult. You know, it's not just the um, you know tools, but it is also about the culture. So there was culture, there was tools, everything came into it together, and then um, and and then the revolution happened. So uh, while this was happening, uh, CI uh, CI and you know. Uh, continuous uh, delivery, continuous deployments, um, you know, all the other aspects came into picture. So these were, these are the pillars of um, of DevOps, right? The continuous integration, continuous deployments, and continuous delivery, uh, infrastructure as a code, uh, learning and monitoring, which are more, you know, most important aspect because it's not just about pushing the code to the production; it's also about what is happening with the code. And what is what are those areas where there is uh, customer is facing the issue, capturing those with an automated way, and uh, bringing that back to the uh, developer where he he pushed the code, which code was pushed. So all this process, all these uh, areas where you need to manage it, you need to build it, and you need to have a structured way of doing these things. Uh, that's where the DevOps tools in, came into picture, right? And you know. Continuous integration, um, you know, it's more uh, most important thing because it it became like you know whenever developer is pushing ten developers are pushing the code to a, a common uh, common repository on a common branch. Uh, whenever they are pushing it, uh, we need to figure we need to be able to figure out the issues which with respect to merge. But even if it is nothing, then there was unit testing which used to run and all those things. Which runs in, and then it was the feedback was given to the developer then and there. And even to, nowadays, even the uh, uh, you know the code is getting deployed, and then there is a feedback after running tests uh, and uh, giving it to the, the developer like uh, within uh, maybe within thirty minutes or forty minutes, he, he gets the uh, feedback of his code. You know that's that's the uh, pace which at which the industry is running, and. Um, and and obviously uh, there are ways to do it. Uh, continuous deployment and delivery uh, brings in a structure of, of how to how to release this. Uh, continuous deployment is where uh, you, I, as a developer, I just push the code and it goes through all the cycle and goes directly into the uh, production. The code is directly uh, in the production. But whereas uh, continuous delivery is when somebody is controlling the releases. So it goes until. Pre-production, in as in pre previous uh, example, there is it goes till pre-production, and then you know some people have to approve it to go into the production. So this is the difference between deployment and the delivery, right? So it is a structured way of uh, releasing the code, and GI is is packaging and managing it and building an artifact uh, which is ready for uh, deployment and delivering it. And continuous learning and monitoring infrastructure as a code. Um, we will see it in the next session. Next session, as I told you, uh, it's more about um, it's it's about Terraform and uh, how monitoring and logging can be used. Uh, that is something which we are going to uh, specifically see um, few sessions. And on also we will focus on uh, container scanning and. Uh, some of the monitoring aspects, Prometheus and understanding Prometheus and other things. So these are few, few sessions which is going to happen uh, in, in in October and uh, in November. So let's uh, you know uh, talk about those areas in in those sessions. But today I'm going to focus only on CI and CD and uh, both the CDs. In fact, so we will take a look at it. So while I'm here, so I uh, I want to start with GitHub Actions, you know, because um, you know, it's 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 more popular and it's it's way to understand uh, the continuous deployment uh, strategy and CI how to build a CI uh, using GitHub Actions specifically for Kubernetes. Uh, that's what we are looking at today. So I'll I'll just uh, deep dive into those uh, you know sessions. 
before i deep dive um you know let me talk about you know i have the resource available so i'm not creating uh communities um you know communities um, uh, you know uh, the cluster it is already available so let's uh, i hope it is visible can you see my screen portal i'm showing the portal is yes it? vivek okay there was some delay in i feel so okay so there is um, you know this is the uh, cluster so i have already have the cluster ready so if you want to learn about how to build it and other things i'll, I'll definitely give you a link where you can go back and take a look at it but this is the cluster which is available um so i have a cluster and just make sure that uh, it's not just the cluster i have uh, because when i'm building with uh, uh, with the uh, github actions i also need need a uh, container registry so i also have something called as uh, you know devops for all the related one uh, the container registry also is available for me and i've already built and uh, pushed the code there so let me go back to this code and this is the code basically this is the code i have pushed it uh, onto the kubernetes as of now uh, but i need to change these things so i need to um, you know change the code and i need to rewrite it and push the code through github actions right so this is this is what we will do now now and we will see how to build that in a ci perspective but before you know given going into that um, you know i just want to want us to focus on understanding the github actions uh, what it is and what is the history of it so anytime i start uh, learning on any new uh, new project right i go into the uh, documentation and i drive through documentation so so most important thing here is um, you know um github actions is nothing but the history of this is is that you know most of the code are in github and uh, so github came up with um uh, action workflows and automated automated workflows uh, specifically for a uh, few uh, things which we can do right for example uh, if there is a pull request which is coming in if there is the new issues came up getting created if there is a new contributor joining in or the you know contributors doing something so there is various things you know you can uh, build a bit of actions and also uh, you can build your own custom uh, actions on top of those and use it um, and i'll show you that in the demo as well so net net it is uh, basically an automation of the workflows uh, which you have developer workflows Uh, and uh, and and one of the workflow for develop, uh, developer is the CI and CD, right? So, uh, so CI is one of the workflow. So we will see how to do it. But um, understanding the GitHub Actions is very simple. It is an event driven. So if there is an event happening, it it just runs a job. And when it it runs a, running a job, it has uh, steps, and each step has its own actions. So. actions can be commands or it can be uh, you know action template or you know you are calling an action uh, for doing specific task and uh, that is what steps are for and you can have a runner uh, this is what i did talk about before starting the session uh, the runners are nothing but infrastructure so when i say infrastructure say for example if you are doing a build job um, you need what you need a docker uh, engine uh, to do the builds uh, so you need to have a infrastructure to run uh, the docker engine right so or if you are uh, doing something related to python and you want infrastructure related to python uh, before you run something and build and package something so uh, you need a infrastructure that is what uh, the the runner uh, which i uh, which i just wanted to talk about this is this this is uh, automatically provided by the github uh, github team uh, for you, you just need to uh, provide the right set of details and it has its uh, different uh, oss uh, support uh, we can can see that and um, and you can also have your own runners so you can configure your own uh, your own 
uh, virtual machines or your physical machines to be you not know, to be one of the runners so that you can use your own infrastructure to run so that is also possible and and, um, and somebody was asking me about the cost of uh, running a github actions um, for you know there are free trials um, you know it is already there so i'll just talk about that because uh, there was a question uh, from the community so here uh, you know it's github is free uh, github actions perspective right oh yeah i'm seeing the same thing okay it is free uh, for some storage and a uh, couple of minutes uh, which they have given so this is per month by the way and storage is required only for uh, you are um, you know if you are storing some artifacts okay so if you're storing some artifacts uh, you definitely need a, a storage and that is what uh, it is and obviously there is uh, some you know uh, probably uh, you know it goes on to billing cycles here and there is they have mentioned for uh, different operating systems there is different rates and other things so do go back and calculate based on how what you need here and what are what are the uh, requirements as i told you um, you can have your own runner you can build this on your own uh, you don't not necessarily will have to use the um, you know github streams uh, infrastructure but it is good to use because it's you know, coming on the fly it, they are maintaining it it's it's already available for you it's always updated so you don't really have to manage your servers you just need to pay and you get all the things uh, done through that so this is uh, about the structure of it so now we will see we have our code and we have kubernetes uh, you know kubernetes cluster and uh, and the code is ready and we just need to go back here and just run so this is the code which is there and you know it's it's already been designed to have the kubernetes uh, yaml so all the deployment controller the kind is already almost set uh, it has a backend it has redis it has a service which is uh, which is a load balancer on top of this but it is not it's not a load balancer it's basically to access this pod uh, here um, and and obviously there is a load balancer type which has been added to the service so this becomes load balancer for yours so uh, there is what front end which is you want to access the front end right and this is already there and it's um, available um so let us go back to the code and we will see how to build a workflow for this and then we will build it from a ci perspective so all you need to do is go to actions and, and create a new workflow and when you do that you'll get uh, the workflow different workflows you can create so see there is different um, already pre-built uh, workflows which is already there and you can access most of them and i i have created a blank workflow um so where is the project we open the yaml so it is also designed on yaml um, as i told you the you know github actions is uh, you know running on an event so there is an event which is there so it's basically an event gets uh, up and running and then there is uh, environment variables you are providing so i have given the registry name cluster name uh, what is the you know cluster communities cluster namespace you know if there is a secret if there is app name what which is the app name you are trying to build and here is the runner details so when i when you see this this is the runner details and in this runner uh, we are uh, setting ubuntu and build on ubuntu and then you are saying check out action so when i say check out it checks out the uh, check out the code which is from the main branch uh, that is at main so there is registry details uh, we have given the registry details and under notice this this is a secret so secret dot uh, registry name and other things so what does that mean is uh, i'm going back uh, to the settings just to show you uh, how to get this uh, secret setup so if i go to the settings right if i go to the settings and there is a secret um if you go to the secrets uh, you can you know create new secrets here you can create a new repository secret 
uh, if you click on this new repository secret, uh, you can see that uh, we can add those secrets here. So how how I can get these credentials and other things? Uh, you can run um, you know service principle for getting this, and uh, there is a command. And to do you know you can run uh, you know you get these details in the Azure portal for uh, username and password. For example, uh, for container registry, I go here in the portal and uh, I just go to the uh, and when I go to the access key, um, you can see that. Uh, there is a username and pick that username and then there is password. So you can pick those password and uh, use the container registry directly. OK, so let me go back. Um, so this is how you can create secrets and keep it here. And the way to access these secrets, uh, we already know uh, how to do that. I'm just going back to the code. So we already know that it is secret dot registry name, and you notice here environment dot registry name uh, from a login server perspective. So basically, uh, there is ENY is nothing but this environment variables which you have provided at the top. So, and these are the commands which you want to run. So you you are specifying it as a run um, run you know uh, you know the command in the YAML file, uh, and you are specifying um, uh, the what commands you need to run. So you're doing a build and you're pushing it to the registry and then you are, uh, you know, specifying where to target, uh, you know, set the context where you want to, you know, push all these, uh, uh, in push all these, uh, you know, build and deploy it onto which uh, server and other things and namespace creation. So basically this is namespace. Uh, it, it, it checks for if namespace exists or not. If not, it creates. Uh, otherwise, it just pulls those images and it, it runs those things. But notice this: uh, each of these have Azure AKS context and Azure K8 context. These are pre-built actions. So, if you are specifying use uses and um, Azure uh, pre-built action, right? So, you are telling you know go to this. So, what does this mean? Is uh, just to go to um, I'll just open an encounter because it will ask me for doing something else. Uh, GitHub.com slash this Azure AKS context. So set AKS set context. So this is how it is set. And this is this is the pre-build already. And you can see action.yaml is here. And when I go to the action.yaml, this is the template which you need to provide. And it is it is using the code which is here, which is using the Node 12 lib uh, JS code, and you can go back here and see that it's in this here. So you can make modifications to it. All those code is here. Okay. So how how to use this uh, is you go to Azure slash all these you know related uh, uh, related actions, and when you go into these actions you see the templates how to use it and you can use it as per you want and there is true false and all and all, all those things true is for uh, mandatory false is for not mandatory uh, those are the things which is uh, part of it so let me go back uh, it's the same thing nothing changes all the same uses the same you know secrets and uh, deployment details and other things and uh, it does deploy the image there and all those stuff so let us Let's go back now, and uh, we will do a you know, code change. Uh, as a developer now, um, I'm going back and doing the code change to it. And when I do the code change, I want uh, code to go in directly into the Kubernetes cluster, and uh, I want to view it. So that is what uh, my GitHub uh, action is all about. It goes until deploying to AKS, and I've been using this. And if you want to understand the details of this and with all the you know complete end to end of this um you know few uh few two to three months back we did a github action series um in it's in it's on my uh, github repo uh, if you go there um uh, you will find source code you will find the um, reference documentations and also 
recording for your hands-on uh, experience. Uh, all all the materials are available with recording with the source code and everything. And also there is some hacks if you want to learn uh, these GitHub actions. There is a bunch of hacks which is there. So if you want, it, you just uh, do the check-in and you will get this uh, GitHub uh, GitHub repo as well. And you can also go to the directory as well. So let us go back and make some changes to the code and we will see a simple change in the code um, and we will see what okay it says cat versus dog and we will change it to um, um, what what iPhone versus Android. Okay. Let's keep this short. I just want to make sure this code goes in. It takes some time. So that is the reason I'm just uh, making sure it. So look at this. So once I push the code, you can see this. Uh, it just started uh, updating the updating the commit. Uh, it, it just started running the build and if I open this up, I can see there is a build happening. So this is how uh, you know uh, you know the, the process is now. There is a code push from the developer onto the common branch. Uh, my branch is main branch, but it, you can set different branches. Uh, when I do the push, uh, I can see already there is a bunch of things which is running, which is which is those steps which I have given. So um, so it is an event which is uh, doing, you know, committing something in, into the GitHub repo, and then the actions are running. So these actions are nothing but um, downloading the uh, code, uh, building the code, and uh, and checking for uh, you know the namespace available or not. If namespace is available, uh, how, you know, go back and deploy this uh, namespace there. So you know, deploy into the different namespace. So. Uh, that's how it's going to be. I don't. So let's go to all resources, and we will see on the Kubernetes. And so here you can actually verify the namespaces and other things. If the namespace was not there, it would have created it. This was my namespace. Um, I created this namespace now, and then. So it has deployed uh, the code there, and this is the link. And it runs the same IP. Yeah. So if I do the refresh, if the code is done, it would come here. It is still updating. Sorry. So it takes some time to update and get the you know get it up. Um, so that's the reason. And I was hurrying it up there, so it takes time. So uh, let's wait for it to uh, run through. Uh, but this is the steps. You know, if you can see this, uh, it sets up the job. It first, you know, um, set up all the, you know, set up all the required um, um, required uh, versions, and then there is uh, it. Act, you know, if you see it, it very, you know, it first does the download of uh, the actions which we are using. So here is. Uh, uh, you know actions which is there right these are the actions which i have used uh, to completely build and deploy it and that is what it is so that is what it does and then there is checkout and log into my container registry and build it and deploy it and set the context and then uh, just deploy it into my communities so it has completed now uh, the build is done so if i go back now and probably so you can see this as iPhone and Android, the code is here. So it's basically uh, a simple uh, way to do it, and you can you can build multiple uh, workflows. And um, as I, I told you, right? So uh, if I go into this, and uh, you can have multiple workflows uh, connected to this. So once this is completed, the other workflow gets triggered, and the other workflow gets triggered. Uh, for various uh, set of things in GitHub, you can build a dependency 
deep workflows and other things a uh, little bit of complicated uh, things but uh, you can obviously build it and use it uh, that's how you can uh, build and uh, deploy the you, you saw the ci part of it um, since it is all packaging in the containers um, it's easy uh, because it's, it's packaged as one and then you're deploying it here and you can you know, from a Kubernetes perspective, you can directly see uh, the code uh, going into the production, and you you can have different kinds of uh, deployment structures, uh, right? So when when you're doing that, uh, probably there would be a you know a different structures to uh, build and deploying uh, the code there. Okay, so this is um, specifically from the GitHub actions perspective. Uh, now we will switch gears to Azure DevOps. Uh, why Azure DevOps? Uh, from a structural way of uh, execution, controlled way of execution, um, and how, how to uh, build the C uh, CD. Uh, was a CD there, and we will see uh, demos of that. Uh, but before that, you know, um, we will understand uh, the different um, different uh, Azure DevOps uh, you know, uh, you know, services which is available for you to use. Right, and this is a more structured way uh, where you have uh, Azure boards, pipelines, repos, test planners, and artifact managers. Uh, you can obviously manage artifacts um, in GitHub uh, Actions as well. Uh, that is why the storage and other things are available. So there is, um, you know, Azure board. Uh, this is uh, basically uh, setting up the different. Uh, you know, Kabana board, or if you are building an agile and other things, so you are working towards the building the uh, Kabana. So you build that and I know I know activate your uh, uh, GitHub to this and um, the code. Whenever you are checking in, you can you know, uh, you know connect to each of these uh, sub, each of these uh, tasks which you have. And we will see uh, Azure pipelines how to do that. Uh, the YAML file for that as well. It's very similar to the GitHub Actions, and uh, it is also for build, test, and deploy. But it has a uh, different things. One is build, uh, um, build itself for CI, and the other is for the um, you know other is for the um, building the release pipelines. And then there is repos uh, which is built on Git. Uh, for you to manage uh, repos on top of that and uh, there is test planner uh, you can build a test planner and execute it then you can see uh, what is happening at the test uh, execution and various things so that is something which you can uh, definitely go back and see and there is artifacts uh, which is is to manage the package and other things so whenever you build something you can deploy the packages on top of this and uh, that is something which you can uh, definitely do. So I, uh, you know, NetNet, I'll go back to the demo and I'll show you the demo of this. So I'm going to the Azure DevOps, um, you know, the dashboard which is there. So in this dashboard, you can see um, different uh, things. Um, let me use this dashboard only. Yeah, so I'm using this project, uh, DevOps for All. I've created a new project, uh, so you can go back and create a new project. You can add members to it and other things. And these are the things which is available: the boards which I talked about, uh, the repos which I talked about, the pipelines you can create, test planner, artifacts, everything. And there is project settings which is available. And if you see this, if you go to the project settings, there are a couple of uh, settings you can make. And most important thing is the agent, uh, sorry, agent pools and uh, parallel jobs. Uh, and, you know, you know, parallel jobs are uh, not available for uh, free uh, from a private uh, job, private project perspective. If you have a public project, an open source project, uh, they would uh, provide you the access. You just need to fill a form. Uh, but it, from the private project perspective, there is no, you know, uh, parallel jobs. And there is self-hosted. This is the runner, you know, very similar to the runner. So if you have a runner, right? So this is uh, very similar to runner, self-hosted runner with, with respect to GitHub Actions. Um, so if you are hosting it on your own machine, uh, you can run it in you know, two parallel jobs. So when I say two parallel jobs, you might have two different projects. You can have two, uh, two different uh, CI pipelines for two different things which you want to do within the same project and all those things, right? So that is 
where uh, you need all these things. Uh, public project, you know, it's unlimited uh, for self-hosted, but there is no uh, Microsoft hosted uh, access. Okay, and there is agent pool. This is this is what the uh, self-hosted uh, agent pool uh, means. So, so you can go back and you can create your agent pool. It's pretty easy to go and create. It, there is a there's a simple uh, you know simple library which you need to run on the on the machine and provide the details of your project and and you can create an access code here. So if you go here, sorry, if you go here, you can create access code here. And when you click on this access code, uh, personal access code, you can download the access code. And uh, with that access code and other things, uh, you can create the agent. So when I say agent, that means uh, I'll just show you how the agent would look. So this is, you know, this I've created the agent on my laptop now, and it is offline, obviously. So uh, it, you know. It, you know, it's it's basically you can go back and uh, run the agent here, and you can see the you know uh, run the code in on my laptop uh, while I was building while I'm building the code. The similar job which here in GitHub Action it was running right. Um, all the you know the Docker login and uh, this one the build uh, which was happening. You know that same thing. Which I have to run, it will run it on my machine if I use this agent in the YAML file of the pipeline. Okay, so now if I go and create a pipeline, uh, let us go back and create pipeline. I have a couple of pipeline, but I can show you how to create one. There is new pipeline. I'll select my YAML um, and continue. I'm not using my ID there, and I'm just pulling this repo. It lists the repo it's because it is listing. It, you know the why it is listing the repo. It means that you know I've connected my GitHub there. While first time if you're doing it, will show you how to do it, and then you do the deployment to the Kubernetes, and it will show you your subscription. I've given my subscription details, so it is that is why it is showing. And then it logs into uh, my uh, account. So once it logs into my account, I, it will show up my cluster details. And I can use a new namespace or existing one. I can use the existing one. Um, it is showing all the namespaces from the Kubernetes perspective. So I'll select default. You can select what the container registry which I want to use, image name, enable review app flow, and then validate. So it validates and you can run it. So uh, while I validate, it generates three YAMLs. Uh, you can see this YAML files. It will it is creating configuring YAML files, and uh, when it creates these YAML file, it's the same. You know, if you see this, uh, there is a structure to it which looks very similar to GitHub Actions, and you can, you know, uh, provide these details as we provided there. Nothing changes here. Also, you are providing the agent name, and here I need to change the agent name if I have to use the uh, the my machine, which is which is the local pool which I want to use. Uh, that's something I can do, and then there is uh, namespaces, stages, uh, and and uh, deployments and jobs which is available out there it's something which um, you can build on top of it it's the same thing you know uh, you can provide all the details here it, it anyway is generates it for you if you're using internal stuff right so it's, it's there so let me go back i'm not running this because um, this fails uh, because um, i don't have uh, i don't have uh, the agent you know the parallel jobs enabled for me uh, uh, because I need to pay for it, uh, something which um, I am not added into my account. Uh, so this is uh, um, something you know. I just wanted to call out this specific failure here. Is if you see this right. So this is the most important thing. Whenever I push the code, this uh, this particular uh, pipeline gets run. So let us go back and uh, push the code here. You know, uh, we will see um, how this code will behave. So let's say 
Okay, we go here and change. Okay. Full name uh, VM agent. No. We will say two. I'm giving a wrong, wrong one. Um, and then I do the commit. So now I'm pushing the code uh, as a developer. I've done some changes to the code. And when I do the changes to the code, uh, you see that within one second, uh, this gets pipeline is running. So here it says one second. So this running and there was some issue uh, in mapping in mapping because the agent pool names I need to change it in the complete uh, YAML file uh, and the agent I need to up and running it. It was offline. I need to bring it up. So uh, you know that is that is the reason it is failing. But uh, NetNet, you are you are able to see this and if you see this right. So whenever I make a change to the code as a developer, 10 developers going back and making changes to the code, you can see this. If I click on this, right, um, you can see uh, what changes I have made, what changes went into the code. And it obviously, um, as a developer, as a DevOps engineer and other things, uh, you can easily identify who the person, um, you know, who the person did the changes and also um who the tri uh, triggering person for this uh, ci and who what kind of code which has gone in so probably there might be different uh, different files different changes um and probably two three people did it together so when you when when you click on these uh, ids uh, they can you can actually figure it out uh, what other things has gone into it okay this is one way of seeing it and next one is uh, i want to show you is the release itself building a release pipeline itself um so imagine uh, just take keep in mind that release 25 is here uh we are looking at release 25 and uh, let me go into the release and you see that uh, i have a code uh, which is attached to it uh, so when you create a new release you can provide provide all these information. Um, so there is a continuous uh, deployment, uh, you know, continuous deployment and continuous delivery difference. What we waste, what it is, we can see. Uh, I think this, this is gated. So it is uh, gated that I cannot push code to pre-production without approval. And I can push the code to production with uh, with any without any issue uh, once it is there in the pre-production. So here, um, the code uh, is there. Uh, this is my project. I've just added that project here. And there is a dev environment where the code gets deployed and artifacts get created and it installs or probably from a Kubernetes perspective. Uh, you, it might be in all in the different namespaces and it can you can run it in the different namespaces and execute it. And there's QA and other environments and other things and then gated and non-gated. So we will see that as well. We'll go into um, the donors project which I have and we will go into the code uh, which I have. Um, so here is a code uh, which what a big code, let me pick a small one. I don't want to donors py itself is okay. Donors py is okay. So let me go here. I've actually done this before. Um, this thing, this code line, right? So we are doing it. Uh, we are pushing the code. And once I push this code, you can see if I go to release 26 release is created. So, you know, that's the beauty of DevOps, right? right? You know, when, when somebody pushes the code, um, the trigger happens. Uh, um, you can have build triggers. Uh, you can have other. Uh, this can be set up as a different branch. Uh, CI branch versus the next level branch where everything is in the production branch where uh, only DevOps engineers are, have the ability to merge 
into this release branch. And once the release branch is set, uh, the code gets released to dev environment. And you can see here, it gets into dev environment. From a Kubernetes perspective, it, it can be to various deployments. And we will see that anyways um, in, in, um, in coming uh, sessions, which is on number 26, uh, where we put that whole plan together and execute as a one whole thing. And there is a QA environment and other environments which also gets triggered uh, while this is getting completed. And once this is completed, um, this gets weighted here. So this is the uh, use case of uh, control deployment, which is continuous uh, delivery, where I'm controlling the deployment to production and pre-production. And this is pre and off Kubernetes. In Kubernetes, there are different uh, deployment methodologies. Uh, we will discuss that um, in the uh, you know next sessions, which is there. But uh, you know, in those deployments where you know you can deploy certain code into the production, where it is only available for a couple of customers, you can deploy onto Kubernetes uh, with uh, with different strategies where you know a uh, couple of of customers have access to a not specific customers you know a couple of people have access to certain code and have some people have access to certain things so for example you know if you're using facebook you know uh, slow suddenly you will see a feature which is there and uh, you know some of the features are not available to me but probably available to somebody else um, and uh, and then uh, in next few uh, minutes or few um, ask if you go back and see those features may not be available for you uh, because they would have brought it down or probably they would have removed access to you or done something towards it so it's how the continuous deployment works so where they pushes the code to the uh, production directly and use those things and if you see here now um this is getting uh wait here uh, i'm thinking this is what i evaluate straight away Does it wait? Anyways, so I'm just uh, I'm just thinking this is continuous delivery uh, setup. Uh, let's just see delete before evaluation complete. Okay. No, it is not. It is a complete, uh, you know, direct deployment to production. I believe. So this is a continuous uh, deployment. Uh, we can change this. Uh, we can go back and and edit the release. Um, we can go here and edit, and then you can see all the things here. You can add uh, those information here. Pre-built deployment approval uh, is required. Uh, you know, just need to enable it, and who. Is the user who is supposed to do it everything you can provide here and uh, you can set this, uh, save those jobs and similar to this uh, here also you can add this when you add those details it becomes a continuous uh, delivery so here i think it is a continuous deployment setting uh, where i'm not enabled uh, the whole thing yeah so this is where push the code goes to production with all the testing in between, all the test scripts run in between. So that is where this test plan, artifacts, everything comes into together. Where you know you're running something and you're pushing artifacts to uh, to the artifacts and test plan. And you will have a test plan and uh, automations running, and the reports are available here for each of these releases. So that's how this dashboard gives you the complete view of your. Um, you know, deployment, release, and planning, and execution uh, for your uh, application. So that is the main purpose of uh, using uh, this advanced uh, tools uh, to make sure that you have code uh, in production as soon as possible. So as I told you, right? So mainly we are trying to solve this problem um, in the in the net net when we discussed you know when you go back uh, some years. So the way it used to get delayed. And the way now we have reduced the time to almost like 30 minutes.
for the deployment or 10 minutes for the deployment uh, for a specific piece of code. And you also see that, you know, there is a small piece of code is going where it's not like, uh, you know, uh, so much big code, you know, which is there and uh, we are pushing a lot of code into the production. It's not like that. So it's, it's a very uh, minimum amount of code which is going into the production. So, so I just wanted to do these uh, demos in, in this um, specific area, but um, most important thing, um, I am you know, running this cloud skill challenge. Um, uh, it's called cloud skill challenge, pardon my spelling there. So, um, you know, if, uh, let me show you the what's in it right so it's more uh, i have handpicked uh, learn modules um, in in microsoft learn and you can go back and uh, complete these uh, learn modules and there are many people who have been completing it and they have been learning it what is so, so important about this is when you go into this uh, uh, learn modules uh, there are a couple of uh, things like in, you know, very nice uh, introduction to various uh, various um, uh, technologies, and uh, there is uh, introduction to Azure DevOps as one specific area as well. So if you can go there and you can take a look at it, and uh, you know, and build on top of that, uh, because there is more modules which comes uh, for you there, and you know. Uh, working with uh, Kubernetes, understanding uh, package management using Helm, everything is here. So um, by, you know, I cannot cover everything in the session uh, and it's very difficult to do a complete uh, workshops on each of these. Uh, you know, if you go back and uh, complete these modules uh, over the weekend, it's all small modules. Uh, if you see 16 minutes, 15 minutes modules, uh, with sandboxes, so good, good part of this is there is with sandboxes. So it is uh, good to uh, go back and execute this. Uh, while you are um, while while I'm at this, uh, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, ask me those questions. Um, any questions um, on any of these topics uh, which we discuss now? I think, uh, okay, in the chat, there is one question. Azure DevOps CI CD with Microsoft provided versus Azure DevOps with Kubernetes deployment. Why should we, why should we go with Kubernetes? If, if we specifically use uh, Azure Data Factory, Azure Analysis Service and Power BI in the, my project, do we need Kubernetes here? Also, please share a practical situation where I can think of it. Um, so, you know, it's a, you know, it's a, uh, you know, it's a mix of things, right? So, uh, one, one of the question which you have is, um, so CI CD is on top of the virtual machines. So you might have a bunch of virtual machines. You might have a code and that code needs to be deployed in these virtual machines. So CI CD workflow is for that. And uh, there's no difference between these two because these are infrastructures and there is a CI CD pipeline which you drive to deploy code onto this. Yes, you can do the GitOps, which is uh, GitOps is uh, is about uh, building the infrastructure and pushing, keeping the infrastructure uh, code, infrastructure as code in the, uh, in the, in the repo and anyone can take that code and and run it and create these VMs and use uh, these VMs for uh, CI CD and other things. So if both the things are required, you know, but it's not like, you know, uh, different things. Um, it's it's a very, uh, it, it, there is no versus of these two things. Uh, CI CD is a workflow. VMs are infrastructure for running those workflows, uh, putting your production uh, for transaction. So that is, that is the requirement there. And um, Kubernetes, why do we need Kubernetes? Kubernetes is uh, for orchestrating the containers. Um, so if you are, um, you know, if you go into my session, also Cloud Skill Challenge as well, uh, you will understand why Kubernetes and other things. Uh, here, we have discussed in detail uh, about Kubernetes. 
So if go into the GitHub repo, the uh, you can actually uh, use the uh, QR code. Uh, you can go into my GitHub repo uh, where you know uh, the you know I've, I've provided the um, uh, details from the um, you know recording and everything there. So the most important thing to understand here is it is Kubernetes is an orchestrator and there are containers uh, and these containers need to be orchestrated. There can be multiple containers you are using in a microservice app. And uh, I did show uh, in that uh, session uh, how complicated uh, the microservice app can look like. And uh, that app uh, putting it in, into the uh, Kubernetes cluster, uh, cluster is about uh, managing these uh, virtual boxes. So it's, it is an abstract on, uh, on these infrastructure workflow so you can un understand that as a you don't really have to manage these vms but it, on top of that uh, you are adding ci cd pipeline there is kubernetes you're you're on top of that you are using this kubernetes there is underlying infrastructure which is vms or it could be you know um, um you know um, in a non-public uh, infrastructure as well right so that is something which is already there Uh, uh, any other questions? Any other questions? Um, you know, happy to answer. Yeah, if you are able to hear me, I can ask a question. Uh, who's this? Arvind, yeah. Yeah, Arvind, yeah. yeah. So, so predominantly, I understand uh, GitHub and uh, Azure DevOps like started differently and trying to merge. But uh, my question is always like, why duplicate functionalities between these two when you know we are using same purpose for you know, same set of environments? Yes. So, um, so if you see the Azure DevOps which I showed you, right? Um, it has various other things uh, to that uh, from an enterprise perspective um, integrations with uh, so many you know tools and other things uh, artifacts integrations uh, test plan integrations um, user management integrations uh, and it can integrate into any source code uh, management so you know github you know it's uh, is focused on github right uh, github actions you cannot use it with gitlab so there are customers who are using GitLab, and there are other people who might be using different, um, you know, source code management, um, or they might have their in in-house Git uh, management system itself. Um, you know, uh, sometimes you know uh, people use it from a security perspective; they don't want to go and put it on GitHub and all those things. So if for those set of uh, users, uh, there needs to be a complete dashboard, complete. Uh, uh, you know, uh, set of things which is uh, which should be available for the uh, you know users for end-to-end -end, uh, mapping to it. Okay, thank you. So, so that means uh, Azure DevOps is more extensive than GitHub for yes. most of the yes. And if you if you see um, uh, GitHub Actions, it is more of um, more of a continuous deployment structure. It's like I push the code it goes to production and you have different so it is all in the context of kubernetes where you can control uh, deployments through various things um, but in uh, azure devops you know you can use it for legacy things as well if you have a non kubernetes enterprises might be using it they are not fully containerized they are not you know they are not like using kubernetes for everything so for them, um, there needs to be a controlled way of execution, and they need uh, integrations with their own GitLab or maybe with uh, just their own GitHub Git uh, management, which might, they might be using. Um, and then they want to control the execution of you know of the code in the pre-production and production. So they want to control it. And they need to put uh, you know triggers where you know uh, I'll put a. Uh, this person has to approve the code to go to the production. So I can do that. I mean, I uh, we can see that, that in the um, this 
setup, right? If you go here and edit it, edit, probably you can see here, approval is required and approval is me, uh, time out in 30 days um, and save. Okay. So if I save this, right, I did save, okay. Save it and uh, I go to the release pipeline again and can I rerun this? That is updated code. That is easier. I don't know where, where the rerun button is. Let me go and show you this. I'm just updating the live coding. And then we do this comment. And you can see that uh, this will get started. And we'll wait for some time because this will take a minute. Probably here I will get something um, for the approval process. So this is something which is not there in you know, GitHub. It just goes into the production. It's a controlling way of doing it and other things. Thank you. Let's wait for it to complete and then show that. Any other questions uh, we have? Um, yes, uh, recording, will it will also be in the YouTube channel. You can also check in. Um, you get a GitHub repo and in that GitHub repo, all the recordings are available. Uh, in in terms of and also other documentation reference uh, documentations and also source code if there is a source code uh, both, all of this is available I'll be posting it yeah Rashmita is going to share the chicken link or maybe even higher yeah this one oh, Vivek uh, yeah I sure I have one doubt so regarding that parallel job right actually mm -hmm. what does that do is running a multiple runtime uh, yes, it's, uh, it's basically uh, um, say I can have different. So this is only one uh, repo which I'm doing, right? I can have different correct, uh, correct. repos in the project itself. So there can be multiple jobs which I can run. So it was until a couple of months it was free uh, for all the public uh, true, as true. well. And uh, right now they have removed the uh, for, you know free. Uh, trial, you know, I just go, you know, I forgot that they have removed it. And, uh, you know, two days back when I was building this demo, I got to know and I just applied for it. Um, but it is taking time for the approval. I mean, you can apply. Yeah, so, uh, yeah that's right. But uh, is it something like uh, only for the multiple uh, code or application or product we have to run parallelly or something like? Uh, uh, yeah, so even in one 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 say so okay, let me show this. Uh, so this is one thing which even if it is one, so basically uh, I can have multiple releases which can run. So I'm not the only okay, multiple right? releases. So there can yeah, be multiple releases. Three, okay. Yeah, there can be five developers who can push the code uh, together and uh, maybe one after the other. Um, and then I will have parallel jobs which are running here. Got it. So for that, I need that. Yeah. So and and by the way, I I was just talking about the approval and other things. So this is how you can do the approvals. Uh, if you just go here and see this, you know, just click on the approve button, it gets approved, and it goes through the approval process. And I am the person who approved it. Um, it records that who is the person puts a you know put your name on it, and then you go into the production. So this is how it is. Um, how it works. Um, so just for, I mean, this is something which I cannot build with GitHub Actions. Any other questions? No question. Uh, suppose, uh, Vivek, suppose if the parallel jobs are not purchased, okay. Uh, so if I, uh, if my developers is pushing the code, committing the code, so it is something like a queuing model. 
no you can you can uh, use it uh, by doing the agent pools um, as i told you in parallel jobs um, if you see here um, you can self host it and if it is a private project uh, you can run two parallel jobs uh, you need to purchase it but if it is a public project that is you are testing it out and, and you are doing something um, you know just for uh, public you know you made it public and you're and it's an open source project as well uh, if it is open source project you can apply uh, there is a form which it shows up uh, where you can go back and apply and when you apply for it um, it they provide you the, the access that is what i have applied for uh, but there is self hosted um, it is self hosted as in um, i can host my own which is the agent pool so this is very similar to uh, the github actions uh, runner where you can also create your own runner which is nothing but an agent uh, which is also uh, to run an infrastructure you know it's providing an infrastructure so in agent pool uh, you can add an agent pool it's very simple to add, add an agent pool you can just click on it uh, select the pool type self hosted uh, and name it as uh, say for example testing and then uh, grant access all pipelines and create it gets created and you can say go to agent and click on new agent um, simple this is this is all you have to do you just need to download you need to download the agent uh, file and then go back and configure it just run these commands your machine will appear uh, on the like the one which is appearing for me sorry the agent pool is wiki if i go here go to the list of agents here it is appearing right so that's all it's very simple i can run those uh, commands here and uh, you know you can keep running your pipelines here because you have a vm or a or a you know machine on your uh, laptop i mean you've installed an agent on your laptop which you can use oh so that means we can create multiple agents and yeah you can create parallel. yeah you can add multiple agents multiple agents yes and parallel jobs also in the same yes. agent and you and and basically the good part of this is uh, let me show you this you can you can uh, see here is where you can provide the details of the agent so this is the similar to the commands and you know the yaml file which is available which for you know github actions you would have the similar things so pool uh, wiki is the my, my the agent name and uh, sorry uh, the agent pool name and uh, this is agent name equals to what is the name of it so you can have multiple agents multiple uh, places you can have different oss uh, it can be on windows it can be on linux it can be on mac os uh, for your testing purpose right you can do it on three different ways was running the application and other things so all these things are available so you can easily manage it um, there it's just that a uh, bit of changes in your code bit of changes if you have uh, all the you know microsoft provided uh, parallel jobs and other things you if you have purchased it's easier because uh, all the things are like uh, straight forward it is uh, it is giving you the yaml files uh, directly and you're just need don't need to even edit it you just go back and run it and you will run got you so where can we locate event code oh man got it okay so just check in and uh, you get access please do uh, you know um, participate in cloud skill challenge um, because most of these things have uh, put it as a learn modules and these learn modules have uh, sandboxes some of these learn modules have sandboxes so you can easily navigate through all these things any more questions oh uh, rashmika you can show the slide Sure, Vivek. So any more questions we have? Uh, we can spend some more time. 
on discussing on various other things as well. I have shared the event check-in link and all relative link on the chat. So, you know, you can get all the links from the chat. So we have the upcoming session next Friday. I have shared the registration link as well on the chat. Yeah, next Friday we will uh, look into Terraform um, and uh, your like how to build it well and execute it uh, from a different uh, angle. That is infrastructure as a code. Resharing one more time so that it's easy for all of you to just go and register for the session. OK, this heat of action is for the Terraform building infrastructure as a service. OK. The different workflows you can build in uh, in GitHub Actions, one of one is the CI and CD. And this is uh, from infrastructure as a cloud. This is different workflow. Okay. Uh, if there are uh, yeah, no more questions, yes. then Vivek, are we good? So that session, no, that yeah. session is for uh, building the infrastructure with, by using Terraform, right? Uh, not with the YAML or the... Yes. Okay. No, uh, building Terraform, uh, but Terraform can be integrated with uh, actions and uh, pipelines. Pipeline, got it. So, so it basically, um, we, I, I'm looking at uh, doing a demo of how to use GitOps, uh, basically. OK, so if we don't have any more questions, then should we close the session, Vivek, for today? Yes, Rishmita. Um, thanks, everyone, for joining in. Uh, do join the uh, next session as well. Please do provide survey um, so that we can uh, you know, make sure that um, we keep doing better job at uh, driving these sessions. Uh, do check in uh, you to get access to all your uh, so, you know, code and other things with which we have been sharing in these uh, sessions. Uh, thanks again for joining. Thank you very much. Have a nice weekend. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vivek, for doing the session and thank you all for joining us today. Like Vivek, uh, Vivek said already, please feel free to do event check in and share your feedback about today's session. It will help us to choose our topics better. Also, please visit our Microsoft Reactor Bengaluru meetup page for more upcoming session. Thank you all once again and enjoy the rest of your day.